Good morning, everybody. So today we'll start the first lecture in biology. So uh, welcome to our college. And I hope that you'll enjoy this lecture. And uh, basically, biology is, uh, the, is a study of life or a very important science that you, uh, that you have to understand in order to start uh, in, the, in all our courses efficiently. So all the knowledge that you will apply or the, uh, you, will, uh, you will collect or you will gain during this course will help you successfully during the next and the third or the next levels in your study. So introduction to biology. So what the meaning of biology? Anybody knows what the meaning of biology? The study of life. So any science that normally focus on life, we call study of life. This is what's called biology. Life arose more than 3.5 million years ago. It just, it's, it's an estimation. So it's, it's not accurate number of years. So basically, you have to know uh, that this is an estimated number. This is not uh, the correct number. First organism, living things were single-celled. So there were a hypothesis suggested that the first organism were, were from a they were from the single cell. So this was a suggestion, meaning that first organism was a single cell. Organisms change it over time, what's called evolution. So the other theory suggested that there were an evolution for this single cell to be multiple cells, to be other types of cells, in order to sort of like accommodate with the, uh, the biology or the situation. But do you think that that's what, why they call it theories? It is not, they are not facts. So theories, that means it has not been applied uh, practically or it has, need, it has not been proved at uh, the theory. So if the theory has been, has been proved, so that means the theory became fact. So this is what's called is not fact, it's not fact yet. New organisms are from older kind. So all the new organisms comes from older kind. So this is a little bit of conflict. So it's not evolution. So all the organism has to come from older organism, which has been existed before. Today, there are millions of species. If you go around all over the world, you will find new organisms, and they all existed in every single space uh, all over the world. If you get the airplane and if you collect the samples from the air, you will get organisms. If you, get to the, if you go to Antarctica or any other spaces all over the world, you can collect different types of organisms. If you go anywhere all over the world, you will find new species either from plants, organisms, different organisms, uh, but still the human being have their, their distinctive characters which has been impacted by the environment. So there is no change in the human being. But the expression or gene expression of all human being has been affected by the environmental factors. They inhabit almost every region of Earth. So that's what's been, what's been mentioned before. Themes of biology. So with themes of biology, cell structure and functions. 
So we have themes of biology which is distinctive for whole the organisms. And we will discuss every single theme uh, uh, in details later on. So the first themes of biology is called cell structure and function, stability and homeostasis, reproduction and inheritance, evolution, and then interdependence of organisms, then matter, energy, and organization. So we'll start firstly with cell structure and function. So what, that, what does that mean, cell structure and function? If you focus on it, cell is a basic unit of life. And you will, you will know this exactly when you do your practical sessions by getting samples from either human, uh, animal samples, human samples, plant samples, and you will find every, and uh, you'll find that the cell is a basic unit of life or any other uh, organ or tissue or whatever the structure it is. And you'll find each cell has distinctive feature, which is completely different from any other organism. So for example, if we get a sample from tomato, tomato or onion, you'll find they both plants, but their cells are different. Their cells are different. Exactly the same thing if we get a sample from tissue, from liver tissue, and from animals, for example, liver tissue, spleen tissue, heart tissue, you'll find they all are completely different because they adapt their functions. All organisms are made of and developed from cells. All organisms are made of and developed from, a, from cells. So cell, beside the cell, beside another cell, they make the tissue. And the tissue will make the organ. And the organ will make the whole system. The cell, then tissue, then the whole organ, then the whole system. Some composed of only a single cell, so the unique structure of the organism that only, that only consists of only a one single cell, they call it a unicellular. Unicellular, so that's composed of only one or a single cell. So how about if they're composed of many cells, so we'll call, they will call them a, we will call them a multiple cells. So the difference between unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular consists of one, multicellular, many or multiple cells. But with the unicellular, which is usually identical because they came from the parents by dividing one cell to two cells. So it has to be identical. So the new of a spring or the new cell, it has to be identical to their parents. Most organisms are composed of many cells. Most organisms are composed of many cells. Because we already mentioned this earlier on by saying multiple cells or the cells will just come will make tissue and the tissue will make organ and the organs will make the whole system cells are different to undergo differentiation so you will study this in details in a course called cytology cytogenetics they will just explain you in that course on this course when you study this course you'll find that during the, uh, the division you'll find the structure of the cells are completely different at uh, each different stage. Cells are small. 
So we'll say cells are small. How about elephant? Do you think that elephant, the cells in elephant are small or large? Small, it has to be small. So if we compare elephant with human being, you will find exactly the cell size, exactly the same, small. But the difference will be in the number of cells. So elephant has many numbers, more than the human being. Cells are highly organized. So when you do it to your practical, you'll find the cell under the microscope are unique or has the same structure. And I mentioned before earlier on that onion cells are completely different from tomato cells. But they all, they all or they both, or they are both plants, but still different. Exactly the same thing with human being. If you get any tissue from any organ, you'll find exactly the same thing. They are completely different because they allow a specific function which match their structure. So the cell structure make the function of each cell. Cells contain specialized structures. Cells contain specialized structure. Like, structured organelles, they carry out all the cells' life process. So if you get the old genetic material, the genetic material, we call them as a black box because it contains all the features that you normally have. Your way of walking, your way of thinking, your eyes color, your skin color, your hair, So each single structure comes from the genetic material that you get from your parents. Many different kinds of cells exist. That's what already we mentioned before. So all different types of, of cells you'll find and they all exist. All cells surrounded by plasma membrane. Why do you think that all cells are surrounded by plasma membrane? Because each cell has to be separate and individual from any other cells. And this is unique structure for the human being, for the animal, for the plants. Because if all the cells are not separate, what will happen? Or what would happen? So you'll not find the unique structure of each cell. You'll find all genetic materials are exactly the same, are swimming together, and this is not good for evolution. It has to be unique. For example, if your skin has been burned, part of your skin, so that means if there is no plasma membrane, so your whole skin will be affected. But if your skin has cells, and each cell has a plasma membrane. So each cell is, is, the, is sort of like isolating the, uh, it, itself from the, the other cells. If it's been infected or damaged, so that means the other cells will not be infected. And there is a signal come from the infected cell or damaged cell to the new cells to sort of like warn them or alarm them there is a damage or there is a danger and it has to be take all the actions in order to protect themselves. Contains a set of an instruction called DNA and what we call it the black box. So all genetic material sort of like protected and it's not easy, uh, it's not that easy to be damaged or uh, sort of like uh, affected. Stability and homeostasis. Organisms must maintain very stable internal condition. So this is the definition, or this is the terminology. Homeostasis and stability organisms must maintain. Organisms must maintain very stable internal conditions. 
So what that mean? How, did you get this one? Did you get this definition? Organism must maintain very stable. Anyone know any example just to explain? No, no, I'm just, I'm talking about the homeostasis itself. Thank you. I'm just talking about, for example, if we are here and the, the, the environment or the condition is just a little bit chilly. So what will you do? Chilly is just mean cold. If the environment is very cold in here, so what will you do? So what the first action you will do when you feel cold? Hmm? Shivering to ease energy. Okay. And what's what's the next? Head muscles are erected. Mm -hmm. to grab the air because the head is insulated. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So to the shivering to just to, to ease energy to help your body to accommodate the environment. So do you think this will last forever? Just for a little bit, just a small time. So what will happen if you didn't eat earlier on in the morning? And you just uh, sort of like continue all your, your whole day without eating or without any food. So do you think that shivering will help you to get the energy? No. And what will you do uh, also if you feel cold? You'll breathe in your hand. So why your breath in your hand will help you to keep warm? Why? Why exactly the same thing? You'll get a cup of tea, it's very hot, and you'll breathe, and the cup of tea has just will become cold. What's the difference between this breath and this one? The same breath come from your mouth. And one will keep you, will keep you like warm, and the other one will keep the uh, cup of tea cold. Hmm? So, so his her internal, our our internal temperature body, our body temperature is exactly the same thing, 37, 37 centigrade. So what your breath will be around 37 centigrade. But the external environment, let's say it's about 16 centigrade. So at least you're sort of like warming your hands just to sort of like feel warm. But with a cup of tea, just a little bit over 60 centigrade. Uh, and your, your breath is 37. So you're making, your breath will make the cup of tea to come colder to at least your body temperature or a little bit above. Exactly the same thing. This is what we call it a homeostasis. Homeostasis, trying to balance your body with the external environment. Temperature, water content, chemical content must be maintained. So let's say if you are hydrated, you're walking in the sun and you are hydrated, what will happen? Do you think that your organs will be affected? Hmm? Your organs will be affected by hydration? Yes, exactly. Will be, will be affected. Why? Because lack of water will affect the pH, will affect the function of your uh, organ, and then will affect the whole body. Are you following me? <laughs> Are you all following me? I am asking a question. Are you following me? Yes? <laughs> I'm just checking because I see like everybody is just staring at me. Are you following me? I doubt it. I doubt it. 
You have to focus because I'll ask everybody, or I just I select one of you to answer one of my questions. So you have to focus with me. <laughs> reproduction and inheritance. So do you think that reproduction and inheritance are linked to evolution? Why? If you say yes, why? If you say no, why? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Because the genetic material comes from parents, male and female, and the offspring will carry out will carry out a genetic material from both uh, parents. So it will give you a unique structure or unique DNA which has different distinctive features from your other colleagues. Okay, thank you. So this is what we call it sexual reproduction. So how about asexual reproduction? Single divided to two cells. Do you think that it will be helpful in evolution? Okay. No. Uh, because you just, you, the, the offspring will get the exactly the same uh, genetic material from their parents. Okay. One parent could be male or female. Okay. Uh, all organisms produce new organisms like themselves. Like themselves. Like themselves even if with the sexual reproduction. You'll find uh, all the people are come just saying, yes, you are like, look like your mama or your mother. The other people will say, you look like your father. Another one will say, you look like your uncle. So you'll find all these ideas comes around and saying, you look like, you look alike. You look alike just as a phenotypic character. But it doesn't mean that your genetic material exactly the same. Exactly the same thing with the twins, as your, uh, your colleague mentioned before. If we get the twins, twins exactly identical, but one of them live in Russia, the other one live in Egypt. So the gene expression or the genetic material will be affected by the external environment. And that's what we call it epigenetics. So the guy who is living in Russia, you'll find him a little bit whiter than the one who lives in Egypt because of the sun. There is no sun in there. And the other one, or there is a sun, but just is not like Egypt. The temperature is not like Egypt. It's above, above 40, which is normally affect uh, the genetic material, uh, sort of like affect the gene expression and the genetic material. And the other one is the secondary metabolites. You'll find the heat affecting the secondary metabolites more than the people are living, for example, in Russia, because the temperature is just under zero, minus 20, minus 30. Uh, and if we would like to preserve food material or any other material, we just put it in our fridge, which is between zero and four degrees. So how about minus 20, minus 30? Organisms transmit hereditary information to their offspring. So organisms transmit hereditary information to the offspring. That's what we already mentioned before anyway. DNA genetic information in all cells. And I said before, if you get a tissue from a stomach and you try to isolate the DNA from the stomach, will be a little bit different from the DNA, uh, the tissue from a liver, and the other one from a heart, okay? Deoxyribonucleic acid, this is the structure of uh, DNA. Uh, DNA contains instructions for three genes because your chromosome carry genes and all your genes are carry out all the information uh, which related your body. So your eye color is just uh, genetic information existed in your chromosome and your gene expressed in a certain level to show the color of your eye. Exactly the same thing with your skin color, exactly the same thing with way your way of moving, many uh, other 
characters or phenotypic characters that's being carried out by your genetic material. Make the structures and the complex chemicals necessary for life proteins. So if your gene has been expressed, will be expressed to protein, and that's what we see. In fact, your skin color is a protein. Your eye color is a protein. So your gene has been expressed to show off or you show up your proteins. DNA in everybody, cell, somatic cell, is exactly alike. So if you get tissue from your stomach and we try to find the DNA, it has to be alike. So if you find a single cell completely different, especially in your stomach, from your other cells, so what does that mean? That means this cell has been affected badly by other factors. And it could be sort of like uh, updated to high risk uh, disease like cancer disease or any other uh, dangerous disease. Sexual reproduction, hereditary information comes from two different organs of the same species, of the same species. So human being has to be male and female. And animals has to be male and female. Have you ever heard about a man got married from, uh, or um, a man got married from a female monkey? Have you ever heard about that? <laughs> would you hear about that? So would you believe in the evolution uh, uh, theory? So our sort of like we begin, like our begin existed from the monkey. Do you, do you believe in that? Do you believe in like in some sort like the, uh, the, the monkey have been like evoluted or evolutionized to men or women? And vice versa? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, it was a theory. And uh, the theory has been approved wrong, just like uh, last January. Uh, this was like in England, they confirmed that this theory was wrong, was completely wrong. So all men or women or all organisms come from pre-existing cells and with the hereditary information come from come from what? Two organisms from the same species. Two organisms from the same species. Egg and sperm, zygote, fertilized egg, and then zygote contains hereditary information, which is which came from the parents, mother and father and give you unique structure and unique DNA. That's why we're still alive up to, up to now. Do you, do you think that you now look like your small brother who are around three years old now? No, you are completely different. It's sort of like your younger brother or your younger sister who is like aged around two or three years, has got new environmental factor, new technologies affected his genetic material. So his behavior will be completely different from your behavior. Your behavior are completely different from your parents. That's why we're still alive. We keep going. A sexual reproduction, hereditary information, from one usually unicellular organism. So this will not like make something unique. So they get the information from a single cell, exactly uh, identical. Resulting cells contain identical hereditary information, uh, genetic information from a single parent. Evolution, population of organism change evolve over generation we have already we've uh, we have a very good example in russia that they had like for example uh, a white rabbit and then they had another one a uh, black rabbit type and when they get like a sort of like uh, uh, with fertilization between 
uh, white rabbit and the black rabbit, they were got like a new species which contain different material black, black and white. And then you will find uh, another feature which is like long, normally white or black. So the black and the white was black blotches or the black was white blotches with easy, were easy target to predators. By, by sort of like a uh, passing time, they were sort of like the black had been vanished and the black with the white blotches already been vanished and the, the white with black blotches was being, were being vanished. The only one existed was a white rabbits. Why? Because they were not easy target. They were like, look like the eyes, were not easy target. That's why they continued. This is what we called, what we called evolution. Do you think that this was, or this happened, like within few months? No, it takes time. So evolution takes time with the changing of all the features to adapt the existed environment. Explains how many different kinds of organisms come into existing species. And then explain how modern organisms are related to past organisms. So very simply, I would say from your phenotypic character that you are related your, to your parents, you are related to your grandpa, you are related to your grandfather, and with genetic material, exactly the same thing. From your genetic material, I could just get the DNA or distinctive part of your DNA and sort of like make an alignment and see who you are related to. It explains how, why organisms look and behave the way they do. Why you behave the way they, you do. Why all the birds behave the way they do. Why all the organisms behave the way they do? Because they've got unique, distinctive nucleic acid or DNA or inherited materials that are normally transmitted from their parents and they follow their leads huh? because they carry exactly the same thing of genetic material. But they combine together to make a unique, distinctive new features coming from the combined genetic material. Provides the basis of for exploring the relationship among different groups of organisms. Natural selection. So one of your colleagues were asking me, what does it mean natural selection? Who asked me this question last week? Natural selection. For example, if we, uh, if you are in the winter, and the whole class have been affected by cold. As the only one has not been affected by the cold. So that we call it like the, his genetic material or her genetic material are completely strong. That's why you know, they were not affected by the cold. That we call it natural selection. But with human being, I cannot do anything. Because you are a human being. I just. I'm not allowed to do trials in human being. Uh, but in the animals, for example, if we got like animals, and all of the animals have been affected by a specific disease, but only one has escaped. So that means this one has a unique genetic material that already make this animal uh, resistant to this disease. So I have to get this animal and sort of like make a new hybrids to transmit this unique feature to the other animals. Okay? That's why we call it natural selection. Exactly, exactly the same thing with plants. If you find uh, the whole field has been affected or infected by a specific disease, but only one plant were strong and were not affected by this disease, so that means this plant has a genetic material which is might make them uh, make make this plant uh, resistant to this disease so i have to take this plant make the, like the tissue culture from this plant or make a hybrid or breeding to a new uh, seeds that normally carry out all resistant genetic material for a specific disease 
organisms that have certain favorable. So like this, this is what we call the definition. If I ask you a question uh, during like your quizzes or your final exam or in midterm, what uh, define or define the natural selection? Or what does it mean with natural selection? So you have to say natural selection is a driving force in evolution. Because if all the people have been affected like virus, coronavirus in Saudi Arabia just caused lots of troubles. Number of people escaped this disease, but number another uh, other people have been affected and died. So if we, if we talk about genetic material, so that means the, the guys or the people were not affected by coronavirus, were resistant to the disease, and we can make study why they were resistant. Exactly the same thing with plant, exactly the same thing with animal, and so on. Organisms that have certain favorable traits are better able to successfully reproduce, reproduce than organisms that lack these traits. So if you are strong enough, if you have uh, strong features, that mean you evolve to the next level. If you're not, you will evolve, but not the next level. You'll not last for uh, a long time. Natural selection, survival of organisms with favorable treat cause a gradual change in population over many generations. So you might be affected by your offspring will not be affected because your offspring will carry genetic material from you and yeah, yeah, like from, your, from the parents, from the male and female. So that might be good for the offspring to carry, to carry on a new uh, distinctive features that could affect positively in the natural selection. Also called survival of the fittest. I hate this theory. I hate it. I don't like it. <laughs> survival of the fittest. So that means if we would like to interpret this word or this sentence, survival of the fittest. So the guys who are going to the gym, just building up their muscles, so they will just uh, st still survive for a longer time, which is completely wrong. Because anybody who's doing bodybuilding here? You? Anybody? From the guys? I know from the females they don't do bodybuilding. You? Okay. Were you, uh, were you just affected by cold or any other disease before? So that means he's not strong. He's, just, he's doing bodybuilding and just eating a good healthy food, but still affected. So just this not sort of like confirm the theory. This theory could be applied with plants, could be applied with animals, but not human being. So we have to be careful when we choose the theory and say could be applied to. This will not be able to, to be applied on human being. Could be applied in plants, animals, birds, or whatever, any other organism, but not a human being. Interdependence of organisms. So you'll find this is like the interaction between the whole organisms in the uh, biology. You'll find every single organism are getting benefits from any other organisms. Like honeybee, they get a pollen from the flowers and we get, we get the honey from the honeybee. So it's like the interaction between the whole organism. So we get benefits from the bee, the bee get benefits from the plants, we get benefits from the plants. So that's what we call it like the inter, interaction between all the different organisms. Insects depend on and the flowers, depend on each other for food pollination. Evolution, the change of biology of biological object triggered by the change of related object. Exactly the same thing. So we have to rely on each other. We have to get all the food or the neutral materials from each other. And we have to get benefits from each other. All organisms need substances such as all organisms needs nutrients, need water, gases from the environment. So if the plant do 
the sort of like we call the plant is autotroph. So the plant, in order to get their food, they have to depend on the sunlight and the water. And do you think that the plant carries sunlight? No. So you have to rely in the environment, external environment. And they have to get the water from the soil. They have to get the neutral material from the soil. We rely on the environment. So if we, get, if we need the oxygen, we get it from where? From the air. So if we have plants inside our house, if we have plants inside our house, and we sort of like, we have lights for the plants. So that means the plant inside the house will do the photosynthesis. In order to, to do the photosynthesis, we'll get the CO2, carbon dioxide, and exer, exer, so like, sort of like uh, exit the oxygen. So I can breathe the oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. And the plant will use the carbon dioxide to do the, pho the photosynthesis. And then later on, I can e eat the plant. Animal can eat the plants, OK? The stability of the environment depends on the healthy functioning of organism in that environment. Matter, energy, and organization. Have you had your breakfast today? You? Mm -hmm. No. I can see if like from here, like here way of listening to the lecture. She's not focusing. Why? Because she had no time. She was sort of like woke up uh, later and she would like to carry, would like to attend the lecture on time. So she didn't have time to eat food. So she was sort of like, uh, will, will feel very weak because she didn't have any breakfast during the morning. So do you think that energy is very important? Yes, we get our energy from what? From food. So if I, get, if I would like to get uh, the energy in a faster way, would, would you think that I will eat meat in the morning? Yes? Would you prefer to eat meat in the morning? Chicken? If I would like to get fast, fast energy, I will get like a juice, banana, any other thing that I will like just make energy very fast for me. Like if you see the player, ten, for, uh, the tennis player, during the break, they will eat what, the, what they eat? Banana, because the banana consists of starch and will be digested in your mouth. That's why they eat banana. They get, they get uh, fruits, they get uh, juice. That's what they help to get the energy. Living things are highly organized require constant supply of energy. So you have to get energy. And we get our energy from, from food, from drinks, from uh, whatever uh, material I eat. So I have to eat in order to get my energy. But not eating junk food, because this is a complete different story. If you eat a junk food, that means you feel sleepy. So I doubt that you might get junk food. That's why you're feeling lazy, or you didn't get your food or breakfast in the morning. That's why you feel lazy, okay? Energy, all energy comes from the sun directly or indirectly. Or energy comes from the sun directly or indirectly. Photosynthesis, and like is a process by which some organisms capture the energy from the sun, solar, and transform it to energy, chemical energy. I heard some like ideas about using uh, two different systems. Like one of your colleagues last year were saying that. One of your colleagues last year was saying that. Oh, okay. It's, so how about if we transfer, we, if we transform the chloroplast to human being? So we'll make the human being autotroph, uh, not uh, heterotroph. Do you think that this could be applied? Why? You get something from a plant and you would like to transform it to a human being? Completely different species. How does, how does it work? And I, I said to your colleague, 
you have to think carefully when you apply scientific method. So you have to read carefully before you suggest any ideas about shifting human being to be autotroph rather than heterotroph. Okay? This is the equation, 6CO2 plus 6H2O in uh, the factor light energy will give the uh, sucrose or the uh, C6H12O6 plus the oxygen during the photosynthesis. Autotrophs and heterotrophs. Anybody can just define autotrophs? Mm. Go on. Okay, like? Okay, heterotroph? Autotroph organisms that make their, uh, their own food. The uh, very distinctive examples are their plants. Heterotrophs or phototrophs use solar energy, the photosynthesis process to get a energy. Convert water and CO2 to sugar and oxygen. Chemotrophs use different chemical process to get energy, okay? Heterotrophs organize must take in food to meet their energy needs are called heterotroph. So they, re they rely on other organisms to get their uh, energy. So heterotroph consume autotroph, we call them herbivores. Other heterotrophs, carnivores or both aminovores for their energy needs. Complex chemicals are broken down to resemble the into chemical and structures needed by organisms. So during the photosynthesis, so uh, all this uh, sort of like structures will be break down to get your A energy. For example, if you didn't eat your food in the morning or you didn't get your breakfast, what would happen? What will happen? Your liver and muscles uh, carry the glycogen. And the glycogen will be broken down to glucose. And then you will get your energy from the broken glycogen, which has been stored in your muscles and your liver. So how about if you didn't get your food later on? Well, exactly the same thing will be repeated twice, three times, four times. But for the people who are sort of like starving, for more than 10 days, 15 days, so you will get the food from the bones. Once your body reached the neutral materials in your bones, that means you did. That means you did, okay? The world of biology, characteristics of life. So cells are living things and composed of cells, sort of like a briefing what we already said before, Organization organized at both molecular and cellular level, and we've already mentioned that before, anyway, sort of like, uh, and we already mentioned about the cells, the, the in multicellular organism, the cells uh, tissue com com composed of many cells or multiple cells, and the uh, tissues combine, uh, sort of like, make the organ or organs, and then the organs make the whole organism or whole system. So we've mentioned this before, and we've already talked about the uh, homestasis. Uh, and uh, I would say thanks for now, and just uh, we'll see you next lecture. Uh, bye.